Surds that are binomial products are expanded out exactly the same way that you would other binomial products. So over here on the right I've got a quick example we'll look at. You might have heard of FOIL where you're going to look at the first terms and you look at the outer ones, you multiply these all together. So just to give you a quick refresh on that we would multiply the first terms inside the brackets so the A multiplies on that A there. Then we multiply the outer ones. So if you look at the outside we've got A here and on the other outside we've got the 1 so we to our second multiplication going through to there. Then you have your inner terms that get multiplied, so the 2 multiplies onto the a, and then you have the last terms. So the 2 is the last one in this bracket here, and the minus 1 is the last one here, so we multiply onto that as well. So what you end up with is a times a, which is a squared. Then we have a times minus 1, you get minus a. Then we have plus 2 times a, so you get plus 2a, and then plus 2 times minus 1. So you get minus 2. You then collect like terms. So we'd have a squared. We have minus a plus 2 a's. So we get plus 1a or plus a and then minus 2. So with our first example what we're going to do is multiply 2 onto the root 3. Then 2 will multiply onto the number 4. Then we're going to have root 3 multiplying onto root 3 and we've seen that kind of thing before. And then root 3 will multiply onto number 4 there as well. So to start that off we're going to have 2 times root 3 which just gives you 2 root 3. We saw that in the previous lesson. Then we have 2 times 4 so that gives you plus 8. Then we have root 3 times root 3. So we can just go and answer that straight away. Now we've seen this a couple of times. It's just going to give you the number 3 and I'm going to put, just in case you've forgotten or you've just jumped into this lesson, it's root 3 times root 3 that gives you root 9 and when you get the square root of 9 that gives you the number 3. So if you're multiplying the square roots of the same number onto themselves they just become that whole number there. And then last of all we've got root 3 times 4 so that gives you plus 4 root 3. So if we just add the like terms we've got 2 root 3 we've got another 4 root 3 over here so that gives you 6 root 3 and then we've got 8 plus 3 so you get plus 11. For this example here, we're just going to multiply the first terms again, then we're going to do the outer terms, the inner terms, and then the last terms. So we've got 4 root 3 times 2 root 3, so you multiply those values on the front there, we're going to get 8, and then root 3 times root 3, well, if this whole thing is bound together using multiplication, then we can just say that we've got 8 times and root 3 times root 3. We saw that over here. That gives you the value of 3. So we've got 8 times 3, and that is when we multiply those two values together. So that's the only part we've done so far. Then we've got 4 root 3 multiplied by 5. So 4 times 5 will give you 20 root 3. Then we have minus 2 times 2 root 3 once again. Just those coefficients, those values on the front will multiply together, so you get minus, you have to carry that minus there, 4 root 3. Then we've got minus 2 times plus 5, that gives you minus 10. So that's equal to 24 plus, and we've got 20 root 3 take away 4 root 3, so they're like terms, so we get 16 root 3, and we still have that minus 10. So with that we can say 24 take away 10, that's 14 plus 16 root 3. So binomial products that look like this are called perfect squares. What's going on is, well if we take an example of say a multiplied by a, we simplify that and say well there's two of the same thing multiplying onto themselves so we can simply call it a squared. So the same thing's happening here, we've got 3 minus root 5 multiplied by 3 minus root 5. So we can expand this out if you like and just say it's 3 minus root 5 and then 3 minus root 5. So it's the same thing multiplying onto itself just like a times a is a squared we've got 3 minus root 5 times 3 minus root 5 is 3 minus root 5 squared. But you wouldn't leave it like this because when you've got the square there it's very very hard to see exactly how foil is going to work. So using 4 again on this side, what we're going to do is multiply 3 with 3. That will give us 9. Then we've got 3 times minus root 5. So you've got minus 3 root 5. And now here for the inner part, what we've got is exactly the same thing. We've got 3 times minus root 5 again. So you get the same thing here. 
and you're going to see that all the time with perfect squares. And then here we've got minus root 5 times minus root 5. Now minus times a minus will give you a plus, and we've seen this a few times. Root 5 squared is the number 5. So collecting like terms, we've got 9 plus 5, that will give you 14. And then we've got minus 3 root 5, take away another 3 root 5, that's minus 6 root 5. So these binomial products almost look like perfect squares, just like that last example here, except you can see we've got a plus in the first binomial and a minus in the second. So they're not perfect squares, they're actually called the difference of two squares. Now what's going to happen here is that plus and the minus are going to sort of counter each other, and you're going to find that some of this stuff cancels out as you multiply it out, so we'll run through it now. The first part we've got is 3 root 7 multiplied by 3 root 7, so those coefficients, the 3 and the 3, we can say that 3 times 3 will give you 9, and we'll bind it all together with a multiple. We've got root 7 times root 7. Well, we know now that that's just going to give you the number 7. Then we've got 3 root 7 multiplied by minus root 5. So we have to carry that minus. We've got that there, and we've got 3 root 7 times 5 is 35. Now on this side, this is moving to the i part of FOIL. We've got plus root 5 multiplied by... 3 root 7. So they're exactly the same numbers as what we just multiplied then, except we've got a plus instead of that minus. So you've got a plus here, and then it's 3 root 35 again. Last of all, you've got plus root 5 multiplied by minus root 5. Well, plus times a minus will give you a minus, and root 5 times root 5 is number 5. So we'll just simplify this a bit more. We've got 9 times 7, that's going to give you 63. Now this part here is what you're always going to see with the difference of two squares. You've got minus 3 root 35 and then plus 3 root 35. So they've cancelled each other out. So we can actually just put a line through those. We don't really need these anymore because they're opposites. And last of all, we've got minus 5 over here. So 63 take away 5 will give you 58. So before we wrap it up, just notice that with the difference of two squares, those two terms in the middle will always cancel out. And the other thing to notice is that if we're looking at binomials with thirds, then we're ending up with whole numbers here. And that's always going to happen unless something different is happening here with the multiplication, if you've got fractions or something in there. But for the most part, you're going to find that your final result will always end up as a whole number because we're multiplying those same thirds onto themselves. So here we had that root 7 times that root 7. That gave you the whole number of 7. We also had that root 5 and the root 5 multiplying together. That gave you the whole number of 5. And the parts that were thirds in the middle, they cancelled each other out anyway. So there's your whole number.